we back for another episode of Change Agents Podcast. I'm Trav. It's Caleb. And today we have our first woman, the phenomenal woman, the beautiful headache, the mastermind herself, Miss Tierra Murray. How you doing? I'm great. You Thanks nervous? for the introduction. That was dope, right? <laughs> I am a little bit nervous, but I'm good. You got stuck on the headache part? You was ready yeah. to fight? Yeah. Man, I gave five positives. But you know, Gemini's, y'all are delusional, so y'all living our reality, but we're not going to go there. You ain't, never, you ain't <laughs> never read my birth Keep chart. it. We're going to focus. Just relax, relax. Anyway, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in, in all seriousness, T.R. is a extremely talented production designer, artist, photographer, all the above. So uh, when we talk about change agents, we always think about you. So we just elated to have you on the show. So Thank excited you. Excited to speak with you. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. I use the Scrabble word, elated. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, the, I try, I'm trying to keep up. But <laughs> before we get into it, like, the, I think our, our theme, our foundation question is, when you started your career, what did you, what made you want to do it and what did you want to change? Mm. So when I started my career, what did I want to do? That's the yes. first question. Okay. Um, I was born in Mississippi. So... Like, I never really knew what the end goal was. I knew that I just wanted, like, my work on billboards. I wanted to be, like, in magazines and stuff like that. So I didn't really know any other way other than, like, photography. So I kind of started off with that. And then I knew at the end of the day I didn't want to be just a photographer. I just wanted to be, like, like I said, campaigns and stuff. Later on, I kind of found out what that title was. But the reason why I feel like it's because, A, my mother always taught me to go for my dreams. I've always been an artist ever since I could remember. And then to just kind of bringing a luxury uh, quality to the South, because I feel like where I was born, it's very... Maybe David, David Bannerish. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, uh, yeah, it's country. I grew up on a country <clears throat> dirt road. We had horses mm -hmm. and cows and stuff like that, so. Yeah. I got a similar story like that as well. You know, just coming up in... It's not an environment that's really conducive for like artists and creatives. Yeah. Like we don't really have like like an outlet. Like it's not like a community. It's yeah. just you know you might know a photographer or two, but that's really it. It's no real mentor. So um, coming from Mississippi, going to Atlanta, like what was that transition like for you? So my transition was from Mississippi to Houston, Texas, to New York, and then to Atlanta. And each one of those experiences were. A story within itself. Um, all of it was hard because I came from a place of not knowing anything, like literally like not knowing anything and then just being like forced into situations where I had to just immediately like grow, immediately learn fast or get, you know, torn down or whatever. But um, I forgot the question, sorry. No, you good. You good. You good. <laughs> but it was, it was all the process. The, the process getting from Mississippi to here has been extremely hard, has been very lonely, has been um, a sacrifice. I feel like if I could go back and tell myself when I was like 19 starting off, like, it doesn't get better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, on some real shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a process. I love it, though. Yeah. It's like a love-hate relationship. Like, you hate the bullshit that comes with it. Can I curse? Yeah, you're good, you're good, oh, okay. you're good. yeah. You hate the bullshit that comes with it, but it's like your passion for it keeps you waking up every day going towards it. Yeah. I love that, cause like, most of the time when people get success successful, they'll tell you that it was hard, but you never really, like when they're trying to sell themselves or trying to present themselves a certain way, they don't really give you the anguish that comes with it. And like, I always tell people, I didn't have great hair till I had dreams and a baby mama. They both kind of contributed <laughs> to my gray hair, but like, I don't care how successful you are. It, it's The more successful you are, the more stressful it gets. Yeah. So a lot of people don't talk about the loneliness and all of that, because you you know, you know got the pretty pictures, whether you're in front of the camera, behind the camera, whether your work is on the camera. A lot of people see the luxury that you wanted to bring to the South mm -hmm. in, in all of our everyday social media now, but like, you talking about the pain and the loneliness, like that struck a chord yeah. because it's real. For sure, and even when it, it's not even just the loneliness, it's like when you become more wise, when you become like more knowledgeable, like there's a certain responsibility that you have at that point. 
that you can't really go back in time. Because like ignorance is bliss sometimes. Mm -hmm. So when you're like growing and evolving, it doesn't get easier. It gets lonelier. It gets, you know, it's well worth it at the end for sure. But yeah, it's just real. I also say if you don't, if you're not willing to do something by yourself and you're not willing to do it for free, then you don't really want to do it. Mm -hmm. So like I don't personally, the loneliness don't bother me. I think like, you know, we have our, everybody has their gripes, but my biggest gripe is if I want it this bad, why the people that I'm trying to bring with me or the people that I'm trying to collaborate with don't want it that bad? And it, is that fair? Is it fair it to is want hard. people to be lonely with you? <laughs> if that makes sense. No, um, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, no, it does for sure. Shit is hard. It's supposed to be. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be hard either way, but really, truly, you, you, you want to bring people with you, but you knowing the dedication, the discipline, the segregation, like all that shit that comes along with it, like that you, like, even when things are not going your way, the, you still get up and do it. Like, you know how hard that is? Yeah. People can't even like get from A to B and we're trying to get from, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. We want to take everybody with us, but that shit is hard. I don't, <laughs> I don't even think I want to take that many people with me no more. Yeah. Like. I, I want I want to take kids with me, but like adults, I'm I'm kind of yeah. over a lot. Of, most adults. That was my biggest lesson last year: is stop taking people with you. Yeah, everybody who's meant to be a part of the process, they're gonna be a part of it. Yeah, you know, you're gonna and grow whatever. together. Yeah, like you know, I'm I'm not gonna get too religious at all, but like you know, God gonna give you what you need. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? As far as like a part of your journey, so mm -hmm. um, I just try to keep you. things like that in mind. So, so speaking of that. I feel like God brought us all, because we've all worked together and collaborated in different uh, manners, but I met you twice. Mm -hmm. How did y'all meet? And then we can kind of talk about the other side. How did we I, I didn't, so I'm, I'm glad you asked that, because we didn't really like officially ever met. It was like, for me, it was like an admiration just for her and what she did as like a production designer for like years. Like, really? you know what I'm saying? For real, like, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? It that's was just a mutual thinking. respect. Like, you know what I'm saying? Being a black woman that's just out here, just doing her thing. So I just always seen the sets that she was working on and the people she was working with. It was just inspiring for me. So, Thank you, I appreciate yeah, that. I thought the real. same about you for real. Yeah, so Thank that's you. how I started. And then we just connected, stayed in touch. I think you reached out to me about like, Maybe a project like some years ago, but mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think the timing was right. But like, you know, everything is is, is going to realign when it needs to realign. Yeah. So we just That's one thing. Up. I, I used to hit up everybody when yeah. I was feeling it. Because I was like really trying to like work. And but... she, was, she was out here. Like, I'm talking <laughs> about like, this had to be 2015, 2016, maybe mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Like, I'm talking about like every single job that you could think of, like she was either working on it or she knew somebody that was working on it. Like, it was like, you know, even for the stuff that I was doing, you know what I'm saying? Like with, you know, $1,000, $1,500, you know, working with Jarrell, like I'm like looking at your sets and I'm like, damn, like we need to implement some shit like that. Like I want to get to a point where I can hire you. You know what I mean? That was a legit she goal. She expensive as shit too. That was a legit goal. Now. <laughs> Rightfully so. I had to put boundaries you know, you, up you, with you, these you, productions. You, you, like... you earned it. You know what I'm saying? Like respectfully. So um, <laughs> just a question I, 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 did, I did have for you though, just... <clears throat> you know, being a black woman, being in the space that you're in as a production designer, like what, what's been that process like for you, like navigating in a male dominated industry? Whew. <laughs> <laughs> How much time we got, right? Right. Um, it's hard, not gonna lie. Uh, especially being like a strong mm -hmm. alpha female. Right. Um, I had to learn how to use my alpha and my female yeah. in different situations and the balance of that for sure. And that definitely helped. Um, but at first I was very much like alpha. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like a, a lot of butting heads, a lot of like the battle of the egos. But um, I feel like it is one of those situations where you just have to deal with it with like grace and like patience and not really taking offense to it because nine times out of 10 it has nothing to do with you. Um, is there you know, male, the male ego. The male ego is a very unique Why though? Thing. What what is that? Like <laughs> Can we talk about that? I personally think women have big egos, so I'm gonna defer to Caleb. You're a Gemini, so you don't count. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I don't know. It's a, it's a case by case thing, depending on who it is. But you know, just the film industry in general, like it's very egotistical. Like it's. Why? I mean, why? Um, because if we're all artists and we it's, all it's, love it's what always, we do, it's always been based on that. Like I mean, going back to the beginning of film, like it's always been about ego. Like you know, like even you know the story of like how Hollywood became Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like they all went to L.A. and. The, the first studio, it was like, all right, I got the movie studio, right? Mm -hmm. And the other, you know, micro studios or whatever, they tried to take that idea and mm -hmm. they just started, I don't know if you knew this, but like, mm -hmm. they started killing each other. Like, that's I how Hollywood that. became Hollywood. I did not know that. Yeah. Now, in the industry, it's I think, all ego. <laughs> I think males have more ego than women, but I was speaking in general. But Chris, Chris Rock said, ego is what gets you on the stage. True. Like, you have to have. I think the difference between having an ego and having confidence is proof or truth, mm. right? Like, you knew you was gonna be doing dope stuff before you actually did it. Mm -hmm. So that belief was your ego to get you there. Then you had to have a will and a work ethic to actually get to the point where you saw yourself going. True. But Chris Rock was like, you'll never get on stage if you don't think you're better than the person that you saw on stage. Sure. Or you don't think you can be better than the person you saw on stage. But I think the ego part, I feel like there's the, the balance. Like, you, it's, two ex it's two extremes. And I feel like there's that's where it's, like, fucked up is because people stop. They don't stop at, like, oh, I just feel confident by myself. They Their ego prevents them from growing. Their ego prevents them Fair. from listening. Their Fair. ego prevents them from, like, seeing the bigger picture outside of themselves. And I feel like... You know, it's cool to have confidence, but it's like, where is that balance where it's like, remove how you feel about yourself and look at outside of yourself. And be over to receiving. I try not to believe my hype. I try to believe my my work. Because um, one of my favorite books is Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. Mm. And I read that book like every three years. I suggest it to everybody. But the book is, I don't think, I'm, it might be one woman featured in the book. But the book is about genius men or successful men that ruined everything they built because of their ego. And it's a line in there where I really agree with where it says your ego is just your insecurities with a megaphone. Mm -hmm. And some people, the more they do, the more they kind of not necessarily repair their insecurities, but they they it's a muscle. Like they work on the things that their weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. Those are the smart people. Mm -hmm. And then there's some people is the more successful they get, the more they run away from their weaknesses, but that's why they come back to hunt them. So I think that's what normally happens. Like these people get successful, but they they never worked on what they knew were their weaknesses. They just tried to hide them. So they always trying to cover themselves. That is definitely what it is. I feel like it's like a constant cycle of trying to cover themselves. And then you just get <clears throat> dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. And before you know it, you're just miserable. Yeah, I feel you, I feel you. For real. Um, so, like, I mean, you've been doing this for, you know, a certain amount of time. I'm probably 10 years in. Um, what what advice would you give, like, to that 19-year-old you? <sighs> oh, shit. What advice would I give? Um, first, the quicker you stop sabotaging yourself, the quicker you can get to your goals. Um, and then to, um, just lead with like love and purity regardless, regardless. And I'm happy that God took me through my route because I remember just like, you know, just being in New York and Atlanta, it's like, it's my time is now, my time is now. like, when am I going to get my shot and stuff like that. But I'm happy that God took me the route that he did because I had to learn mm -hmm that, you know, I had to learn, like, love first. I had to learn, like, who I was first and staying true to, like, morals and values regardless of whatever fuck shit that comes your way in this right. industry, especially in this industry, you right, know what I mean? Right, right, right. So I would say definitely, like, um, remain pure to, like, love and purity regardless of the situation because that's what's going to, you know, come out on top. Gotcha. Yeah, so, like, you know, coming from Mississippi... Um, going to Houston, making the transitions that you made, like being a photographer, working in production as far as like working in art department, like all these different like different changes and shifts and stuff like that. How 
I guess, like, how have you been able to, like, navigate through all of that? Like, mm. that's just a lot of shifts. And I can relate, too, because, you know, I started as a photographer, too. I don't know if you knew that. Mm. But, um, like, what's been that journey for you, like, specifically? Like, the shifts. What did you say? I've been trying to get him to, like, put all his prints up around the studio. You should. I don't even think I've seen your photography work. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what's been your journey? <laughs> um... So as a person who is very stubborn and like a control freak, it's, it was hard because A, I was coming from a place of like struggle and poverty. So mm. being having to be open to things changing and you having no control of it is like a process within itself that mm. I had to really learn. And I feel like God took me through the most craziest situations just to teach me that lesson to like let go and right. just trust the universe and whatever. Because I, like I was telling um, Kira earlier, I was like, I. I never even knew production design was a, like a thing. thing yeah. But if I didn't, if I wasn't open to like random opportunities or right. random things, then yeah. I never would have been Exposed in the situation. To that. Yeah, and I've right. done a lot of things that had literally nothing to do with the other. But yeah. it's just like just be open, just yeah. accept it, just go into the directions, just stay aligned, basically. Right. So it's like if you if you stay aligned, if you stay open, instead of trying to control everything. Right then it just gets a lot better. But the more you try to control it, the more you try to force your weight, and the more you try to stress about it, the more all that other shit is right. just complications. That's like adding negative energy to it. But if you just let go, <laughs> you know what I mean? And just let things come in, it's just easier. It flows easier. And now it's like, I honestly don't have worries. Like I don't worry about shit. I don't worry about bills. Right. I don't worry about clients. I don't worry Facts. about what's my next. I don't worry about none of that. Facts. Cause it's like alignment. I know yeah. I'm in alignment and I, my goal every day is to like, are you in alignment? You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you going in the direction that is towards alignment? Um, right. Sometimes, right. you know, I kind of. Yeah. <laughs> but it's I like mean, a, we, 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 all, we all have our moments, so I, I could definitely relate. But yeah. as long as you are intentional about everything that you mm -hmm. do, you know, work on, like, that's what's most important. Like, being intentional about the projects that you take. Intentional. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like it, and take it care just, of yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because we like we work in a factory. Like, I feel like production is sometimes like a a factory. Um, we just crank them out and the uh, next, and you just jump to the next and the next, and it's like. Man, I'm I'm, I'm glad you myself. mentioned that. Um, and this is something I want to you know say on this show on this stage. It's like, you know, I feel like the creative is the new slave. We are. That is. That's like, word. Another thing. Kanye we are said. slaves, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you, if you look at like underpaid, you know, like <laughs> like our like our ideas are constantly bought and mm -hmm. sold at a certain price by a certain deadline. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they put that price tag in front of you, like wave a dollar at you, you are gonna take it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, they can talk to you however they want to talk to yeah. you. They gonna do whatever they want to do to you. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? And it's just like when you think about things like that. That's why I'm very particular about everything that I do, yeah. like everything that I'm a part of, and I'm sure you're the same way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, facts. And then we get that the little chump changer that give us, and we yeah. bring it back to our other creative friends, and be like, yeah. we only got this. Let's right. create. You know what I mean? Right, it's not right. fair because yeah. it's like we really control all of this, like our ideas, our talents, everything. But we don't get what we deserve. We really are slaves for real. Yeah. It's like here you go, do it. And then we're gonna do it because we're passionate about it, not right. because of the money. Exactly. That's exactly. Why we, you know what I mean? It's like, never been about the money. <laughs> it's never now, about the money. Now that's not to say that we don't deserve to be paid fairly. No. Facts. That's not to say that, but like cut the cameras. We deserve <laughs> to be paid. Facts. <laughs> Keep facts. the shit on. <laughs> for real. But you know, Jay Z said we are culture. Nothing moves without us. Facts. Yeah. And and since we on that topic, I got a confession. You inspired the campaign that I'm doing right now. Really? So the campaign we're doing is called Create Great, but that's about 70% inspired by you and not even intentionally. 30% of it is Josiah, of course, and mm. you know me and Caleb have had many conversations about Josiah. Everybody here knows Josiah, but you know I'm not going to really get into his personal business. But the other part is about women who don't get their due. And that's not to say men don't get their due, because I, I never feel, I don't think I've seen a budget that Caleb has got, even the big ones, that I feel like he's paid what he deserves. Because mm -hmm. I see it, I see how he works, I see his turnaround time, I see his his level of execution. But um, just for full disclosure, like when we tried to do the, um, the Santana mm -hmm. thing, 
and they didn't approve the budget, it pissed me off because it wasn't a big budget. Yeah. And, you know, I could just be, you know, finding little, and I took it personally. Like, I could be finding reasons yeah. to, like, keep myself going, but what I, I know the budgets that we've, we've looked at and they're huge budgets. And I feel like once they found out it was you and once they found out it was a woman, they tried to talk us down on the budget so low. And it drove me crazy because I, I study people. Like, it, it's, I especially study people that do things that I can't do. Like, that's one of my obsessions. So, like, I could play basketball, but I studied Michael Jordan because he could do everything on the court that I couldn't do. And there's a skill set to how you do something, not necessarily what you do. So people will look at Michael Jordan versus LeBron. And it's for me, I can easily see it's just the way he puts his package together mm-hmm. that nobody else can do. And I look at, I was looking at the way you put your sets together. And we've had a lot of sets be built in here and they just don't put them together the way you put them together. And I'm talking about, we've had whole art houses be in here for months. Three. You know what I'm saying? We all kind of teams. And I'm like, but there's a nuance to the way she goes about getting her stuff done that I felt like not only did you deserve the number you was asking for, you deserve more. So when that happened, I'm like, okay, we have to do something about this. And I, you know, I argue with you, like we trying to build different stuff now. And I argue with you about, you know, how much this prop is versus this prop. And it's not because I don't think you deserve it. It's I'm literally trying to learn. So I'm trying to learn, well, why is this this and why is this this outside of what your labor cost is? Mm-hmm. Let's figure out what's your what's your your okay. reasoning yeah. behind the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I want to go get a million dollars for you to build whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. And that's not me just saying that on camera because if I get a million dollars, she's not getting it. But you that really frustrated frustrated me. So do you think do you think you've seen it more so be women getting low budgets or was I was I kind of taking on this thing no. because I wanted to. Every time somebody hit me up, hey, it's a low budget. Like, literally, that's the first thing everybody says. And it's like, not these big brands are not giving everybody low budgets. You know what I mean? Right. It's just right. like, I feel like I've, I've experienced firsthand producers lying about the budget. Yeah. And especially when it comes to art, it's like, oh, we only got that much. And... As anyone in production knows, art is literally like the most important part yeah. of all of it. Like we yeah. work the hardest. We start before everybody. We end after everybody, yeah. and we get paid like the the nothing, nothing yeah. like chump change. And it's like we be figuring that shit out <clears throat> because we we're resourceful. You know, we think off the top of you know that's just yeah. what we do. But it's just like we are we work a minimum of like twenty hours. Yeah, on each minimum. job. On each, each job. Each. And, and, and just so it's people, only 24 hours in a day. Like, right, right. you know just what so, I mean? Just like, so people understand that's that's out there, like, you know, in a standard film set, that could be, you know, minimum 12 hours, like mm-hmm. minimum. So, minimum like, bare hours. minimum for them is like, what'd you 20, say, 20? 20. Every 20. video, like 20 hours. So think about, like, your standard rate on a production set, their rate is cut in half, mm-hmm. and then it's eight more hours on top of that. Mm-hmm. And then they probably That's our department. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then depending on how big it is, you also still gotta split that with crew. Yeah. Like three split or four different people with crew. Yeah. So but that really frustrated <laughs> me. Um, but to call back from that, I remember you saying, you know, because you're an alpha woman, mm-hmm. do you feel like you're alpha because you're alpha, or do you feel like you're alpha because you felt like you had to be? I had to be. I had to be an alpha woman. Like I, I'm a very, anyone who knows me, I'm very like chill, soft, mm-hmm. like easygoing. But in this industry, <laughs> you got to command. Right. I'm just messing with you. Right. Oh, okay. I just know, my bad. But <laughs> um, yeah, like, like I said, I was in Mississippi and I moved to New York. Being like a Southern girl from Mississippi ain't, like they don't care. You know what I mean? Like, you had to boss up. You had to get tough skin. Mm -hmm. I cried every day for, like, weeks. And I had to really, like, change. I had to really, like, become harder, honestly. I did. And and especially in situations when you're dealing with people, people who try to put you down, people who are disrespectful. It's like my my walls just got, like, you know, it just got tougher and tougher and tougher. And... Like them flats. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but yeah, it's like I wasn't born hard. I was born soft. But mm. it's just depending on. But also, I was a little jaded too. So I feel like I was constantly in a state of like defending myself or protecting myself. Survival or mode. Survival mode, literally yeah. all the time. And so yeah. I feel like that energy. I became jaded and like I was giving off too much masculine. So I had to like step back and remember like, okay, mm -hmm. you can't fight that with that. You can't fight ego with ego. Yeah. And learning like the power of being like a woman for real. Yeah. Um, because I feel like women, we are strong mentally at the end of the day. Like y'all might have the physical strength, but women's like mental strength is on some other shit because not only do we take care of our shit, but it's like we, we inherit y'all shit too. Right. And we're able to like filter through that shit and yeah. be like, all right, you know, back at it. Right. So it's like, right. we take a lot of like hits for real. Mm -hmm. And I took a lot of fucking hits, still taking them every day. But it's like, you know, I handle it with grace now before OT or want to fight and all that stuff, <laughs> but <laughs> had to learn, you know, like how to it's other handle ways. Yeah. It's other ways to the, the, the problem solve. Yeah. And the conflict manage and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, Another question I have for you, um, the show is called Change Agents, and mm -hmm. you talk about just that change for you to go from, you know, starting out as a photographer, being open to opportunities, and eventually working in art. Like, you know, a lot of people could have just stopped at being a photographer. Mm -hmm. Why did you keep going? Because it was always more. And it's always like, I've always seen, like, excellence. I've always seen, like, the top of the top, the best of the best mm. for myself. For and real. I say that because, I mean, we ain't got to say no names, but we know a lot of people who, you know, stopped at being a gaffer, mm -hmm. stopped at being a photographer, mm -hmm. stopped at being, you know, whatever role and whatever they were doing, like, but you you continue to find ways to grow yeah. and find ways to continue to advance. I just, I just got a lot of respect for that, so. Thank you. Yeah. And I think, like, listening to you talk, you have, as hard as you said it it was or it is, you have an appreciation for that. So would you change like would you change want that to change for the next group coming up under you, or do you think it's necessary to have to go through those struggles to get the diamond? If you can avoid struggle and just listen to advice and other people's perspective, that's the best way to go. Um, I <laughs> even like my team is just like. I went through shit so y'all don't have to go through shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's right. like avoid all that shit if possible. But I do feel like, you know, sometimes you do have to have those struggle points so you can build those muscles. Mm -hmm. So you can build like, so you can gain the knowledge and the wisdom that you do need in the future situation. That's why I don't regret anything that I've been through because I'm stronger, I'm smarter, I'm faster, I'm wiser. And all the knowledge that I do have, I'm able to like help other people who were in my similar spot at like 19 or yeah. 18. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like pressure made diamonds. Mm hmm. It's it's worth it. You know, it is. So as you sit now, what what's the dream project, brand, or artist that you want to work with? Um, Calvin Klein. That's interesting. I would have never guessed that. Yeah. So my background is like fashion and editorial, like stuff. So like. When I got to Atlanta, I started doing like music videos and like film and stuff like that. But like my first love is like fashion. So like doing uh, edit editorials and campaigns for like some of like the biggest fashion brands. That's like my goal. I feel that's, like that's two podcasts in a row that Calvin Klein came up. Mm -hmm. Real? Because we was talking about um, brand PG Lane. Yeah. and PG Lane, which is Kendra Lamar's new company. Mm -hmm. They launched they com their company with a Calvin Klein. Mm. partnership and I love bringing that into the fold because we especially as black creatives and black people in general we feel like we have five people to go to mm -hmm. like we're gonna go to Nike we're gonna go to Sprite we're gonna go to Coke or mm. yeah. we're gonna go to BET or whatever mm -hmm. or Ebony whatever it is and I don't have it's nothing wrong with like having liking those brands too mm -hmm. but why can't we go to Calvin Klein why can't we do Aeropostale deals. Why can't mm -hmm. we, you know what I'm saying? Why can't, nice. can't we do um, Fashion Week? Like, that's what I love about <laughs> Kanye. We'll do the Gemini arguments all day. But what I really, I think what it really is, I love disruptors. Mm -hmm. So I love Kanye for the same reason I love Iverson. For the same reason I love Trump as a disruptor, not as a president or a person. Yeah. Like, I love disruptors because... 
we're all we're all even more programmed now than we was coming up. Mm-hmm. Everybody's on the same same talking point, same mm-hmm. same dream, same everything. And it's like I like people who are just willing to say, "I'm going left. Mm-hmm. I don't know where I'm gonna end up, but I'm going left." Thanks. Because if none of us or none of the people that I want to talk to, we want to feature, if they don't go left, we don't see it. Like being from Albany, I was I wasn't supposed to have a production studio and all of these different things. I was I probably would have met Caleb in passing because our small towns are so yeah, far close. from each other, yeah. like maybe at college or something, but yeah. that would have been it. Another question I wanted to ask you. Um, what is your greatest failure? And how did you pivot, find a way to kind of get out of that situation and grow from it? Ooh, my greatest failure. Honestly, sleeping on myself. Like, <laughs> when people will give me compliments or anything, it's like, it doesn't matter if you don't feel the way about yourself. So I was like my biggest critic and I thought I was just being hard on myself, but it's just like, no, that's like, actually you're abusing yourself for real. You know what I mean? It's like, why was I so hard on myself and like downing everything that I do? And it's just like, what you're creating is art, regardless if there was imp- imperfections. So I feel like I was the person that was sleeping on myself. I wasn't as confident. Um, I wasn't really walking in my power. Even now, I still like I'm I'm getting more and more comfortable like walking in my power. But yeah, sleeping on myself that was my biggest failure because I feel like I, I wasted a lot of time, like yeah. and thinking things that nobody else was thinking. It was just like nobody's yeah. thinking about that to you. Yeah. Only you are like. Right, but right, those right. things were the things that I let stop me. <laughs> and all that shit, yeah. That's the tough thing about being an artist because you get in your own head a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, so many people around you, they'll see your work, they'll see what you do, and they're like, you're so dope. Like, you're the GOAT, you're this, you're that. Like, oh, but then totally. internally, you like, but I then, really could have did so much mm-hmm. more here. I really could have did so much more there. Or mm-hmm. this project doesn't look the way I saw it in my head. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I can relate to that. Like, it's just, it's, it's a constant battle. Yeah, and even that thing I had to learn too. That thing that that is is like it carries over into other parts of your life too. You do. So you yeah. end up like start critiquing everything, everything your, your man, your woman, like everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just not a good thing to have. And it's like that that little voice in your head that you you know communicating with. Like you really got to speak life into that. Like mm-hmm. you got to communicate with yourself in a positive way because, like you said, it affects everything. Mm-hmm. Like if you have like a negative perception internally, like everything. on a higher level, it's just gonna affect everything else. So mm-hmm. it's just never good, like ever. Thanks. <laughs> What's your greatest failure? Um, my greatest failure is, that's a great question. Um, I got a few, I got a few. I would say like everybody has had, you know, an experience working with, with Kanye West and, you know, just like you, I'm, I'm all about like helping people, putting people in the best position to succeed. Um, I don't think I, I don't think I did that in that situation because, you know, for one, um, hired a team of 10 to 15 people for this project, working with him over a period of like, you know, seven to 10 days. And, you know, I didn't lock in paperwork properly. Um, people were exposed to COVID. This is like early 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, I just could have handled that a lot better from an administration standpoint. But mm-hmm. the lesson I really learned from it is like, you know, like obviously it's just it's just a game. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's just the way certain things kind of go. Yeah. And, you know, you, you just like me, it's like you want to put people in position to where they don't have to deal with the shit that we dealt with. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's always been a big thing for me. And that's that's kind of what... I really instilled in open season and, you know, the other entities that I aim to establish. But so, like, it's just that, like, learning to navigate, you know what I'm saying, through that situation, working with him and, you know, the people he had working for him. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, man, it's just how people, they genuinely don't care. Like, they, 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 they don't really care about, about anything. They don't care about themselves. Um, you know, I'm one of those people that really take pride in the things that I attach my name to. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't really have anything else outside of, you know, like, you know, my name, my family, and, you know, my brand. Like, mm-hmm. that's that's always been a big thing for me. Yeah. Just maintaining that brand. 
do you feel like you, on a scale of one to ten, how do you feel about your brand and the things that? I feel a lot better now. Yeah. Um, I used to question myself a lot as a director, but then I really had to talk to myself and really understand that, you know, given the resources, given the budget that I was given, I did the best I could with this. Thanks. Like, I really had to tell myself that on a lot of on a lot of things that I was working on. Like, I'm like, yo, like, I really did some shit with this budget. Mm -hmm. Like, it still don't look the way I know it could look, mm -hmm. but I really took it there. You know yeah. what I mean? So, and I think the more that you do that, I think it'll, it'll help you as well, which I'm pretty sure you're already doing, but I'm just saying, like, it's, it's really helped me a lot. Yeah, you're definitely giving yourself grace yeah. and understanding and, like, patience and being kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's very key. Even when you make mistakes, it's, I have fucked up budgets, I have fucked up productions, I have yeah. fucked up jobs. Right. Like, <laughs> but it's like, half of the time we go into things not knowing. <clears throat> not knowing. You know what I mean? I mean, it's I'm like, talking about like, Kanye called, like, yo, like, we need a producer down here at Pinewood Studios, mm -hmm. which is like, where they shoot Marvel and all these crazy productions in Fayetteville, mm -hmm. which is owned by Dan Cathy, which is mm -hmm. the owner of Chick-fil-A. Like, I'm going down the same day. And, you know, I'm walking into, like, fire. It's not like everything's <laughs> calm. Like, we yeah. need a producer because shit is fucked up. Yeah. And so I'm just unfucking the shit that they messed you up. And then trying to fix it. You know what that I mean? That right there is crazy, though. <laughs> yeah. So you shouldn't even, like, be down on yourself or it. That's not even a failure. Yeah. I, like, I who else just... in that situation could have, like, executed with yeah. not having, like, the knowledge or, like, you know what I mean? Like, but it's like, I always think about, like, you know, I got the call for a reason, so it's like, exactly. I want to continue to do good things so I can continue to get more calls. Exactly. That's what I always think about. But you will. Don't let that thing, yeah. That's not oh, no, failure. I'm good, no. It is what it is. That's like, not a failure. I mean, they've called since then, so. <laughs> exactly, that's we not good. a failure. Yeah, yeah, we good, That's so. not a failure. Yeah. This is that's my last experience. question. I think I know your answer, but I want you to answer it after. Creatively, who's your mark? Who's my mark? Yeah, like who's, like, that's who I'm aiming for, or that's, that's who I think is at the top of the mountain that I want to be on. Mm -hmm. So who's your mark? Um, <laughs> he is, and I would normally say nobody. That's ego, but <laughs> I I do admire this one artist. Um. I don't even know how to pronounce his name, but I know who he is. Uh, he's Beyonce's creative director. And oh, he does, yeah, yeah. I think he's like the only artist on it, like Rock yeah. Nation or yeah. something like that, but him. Right. Because he, he's doing everything I want to do. Like, even yeah. like, he's doing production design for like, I think he did like the store design for Rihanna's like Fenty mm -hmm. first store. That shit I want to do. He's yeah. doing stage design for like concerts. That shit I want to do. Like, yeah. he's doing literally, if, it, if I could say like, who is doing what you want to do for real, it would be him. Yeah. Because he's not only just Beyonce, he's like in other areas too. Right. Yeah. And it's like you touching so many different things. And yeah. I can even see you doing like tours. Like, you know I what I mean? I can't wait like, to do a tour. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Yeezus tour. Yeah. Like for real. I want to. In I keep saying I want to be the first non-isolated talent to be signed to Rock Nation. Really? Like I don't, I'm not a, I'm a creative, but I'm not, like, I don't have a, a specific lane. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not a set designer, I'm not a director. I want to be signed to Rock Nation for them to just take, let me build out my wild ideas. Like, this studio, this creative country club, what we're trying to build it to, this is a wild idea. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to kind of put that into scope for, like, a bank or, like, whatever. Yeah. And I always tell people, the reason why all these kids want to be rappers is because they get bank loans, essentially. <laughs> Like, yeah. bad credit, whatever. If you're talented as a rapper, they give you a record deal, which is a bank loan, mm -hmm. for you to go do what you want to do. Why can't we get Loans signed? Like, why thing. can't you get signed just to say, you're an amazing director, whatever you want to, That's whatever true. your vision, your dream movie, whatever it is, I'm going to sign you and I'm going to get behind it instead of having to go do, you know, find a venture capitalist mm -hmm. or find crowdfunding and all these different things. And I think eventually I've talked to some of some people who have some inside tracks to Rock Nation and just other companies, like, I think companies, record labels, brands, Calvin Klein, no matter who it is, they're just going to simply start signing creative people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no matter what they do. And it's not going to be so kind of fundamental. So you saying him, he's the only artist on there, 
but he don't necessarily have one set of artistry. Like mm-hmm. he get to go do Very. all of these different things. Yeah. Um, who's yours? Um, it's it's a couple. It kind of varies from day to day, but in this moment right now, I would say Ryan Coogler. Mm, you know what I'm saying? It. Being like a young director, producer, working on you know what was considered a low budget film in Fruitvale Station, mm-hmm. making that what it was, and then transitioning over to like the Marvel family. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the bar. Like yeah. that's you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it, it ain't like you know an age thing. It's just like the fact that he a black man from you know Oakland mm-hmm. doing he doing. It's just it's just respectable. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Did he sue Atlanta? He sued Atlanta? Did he? I don't know if he sued Atlanta. I think About he sued what? the bank when, from when that they, situation. When they arrested him for trying to get some money out of his account. That's another story. Oh damn, he did? Yeah, that, that happened. That was yeah. crazy. Um, Shout out to Ryan Cooler though. Yeah. But <laughs> but he's 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 an amazing director, amazing, I mean, everything. I just like I really I really study like the same way he studied like your Alan Iversons, like I study you know, John Singleton, Ryan Coogler, you know, Spike. Um, you know, I can name another 10, but it's like for those men to transition into film and to maintain, um, you know, some sort of a legacy there, mm-hmm. like it's just respectable. And it's like, why not me? Why not you? Why not him? Mm-hmm. Why not? I was going to say John Singleton. Yeah, you, John Singleton you. too. You know what I'm saying? It's it just like you know why not? Mm-hmm. Like we we here we 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 doing the things that we love. You came from Albany. You came from Mississippi. I came from a small town called Sanderville, Georgia. Like we got to this point. Why not keep going? Yeah, why not? Creatively, and it's crazy because I don't want to do what his main thing is, but creatively, mine is Dave Chappelle. On a level of just being a communicator. And, you know, probably like right now, people might feel like he's not the best communicator because he, you know, they he's had the drama of the last and they're like, well, he keeps talking about the same thing. But I think, number one, Dave Chappelle, being literally just a communicator of culture, was able to do Roots Picnic. So he dabbled, he got the music, he mm-hmm. did acting, he's executive produced. But nobody, I don't think it's very many people in culture that no matter what they say, they stop time. Mm-hmm. Like, no matter what goes on, and he has a way of translating how three or four different people can feel completely different about something and find the middle ground. Mm-hmm. And he just get to do all the dope shit. So um, what is your, your biggest failure? Um, I think my biggest failure, if... If I'm being honest, I think my biggest failure is the first year of this studio. Really? Because I think we had a great year. Um, we did a lot of great things, but I feel like we only did 20% of the things we could have did. And I think, of course, a lot of that is capital, right? And we, did, we, we didn't get bank loans. We got a, a couple friends invested and the rest of it has been our own sweat equity and our own money and our own relationships. But I just had a goal for it to be further along, and it hasn't gotten there yet. And that might be hard, but I don't really look at other things in my life as failures. Mm -hmm. So like me not making it to the NBA is technically a failure, but I know I didn't give it everything. Mm -hmm. So the only failure in that would be me failing myself by not working as hard. Whereas in this, I'm busting my ass every day. Mm-hmm. And we're bust, like we're doing. Me and Caleb be sending each other like the smallest details of things at three o'clock in the morning. Like we argue over set design, we argue over placement, we argue over flow, we argue over all these things. And I've never had a studio, and I've never shot content. Mm-hmm. So it's not even like I'm coming from this from y'all perspective. But it's also about I've always been a connector of people. So what I pride myself on is bringing the right people and removing the wrong people. And we're in the process of doing that. But until we've collectively got the right ecosystem to build this thing the way we need to and and grow the way we need to, it's technically a failure where other people might look at it like, man, y'all, y'all had a great year. But it's I like I think it's failure. I think y'all are first of all, y'all are doing something that nobody is really doing. 
if you were just trying to do a studio, it'd be just one thing, you know what I mean? But you are trying to build, y'all are trying to build like layers to it. It's not just one thing. So that takes time to, to really like, you know, I feel like <clears throat> y'all are doing an amazing thing. Like where y'all are at now, it's really great. I don't think that's a failure. Yeah. It's like I, the first I, year. I, I was about to say this. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say this and then, and then we'll wrap up. But, um, you know, I, You've seen a lot of studios. I've seen a lot of studios that, you know, they didn't make it out of year one. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? They they didn't survive. Like, they came, and it was like a dope little thing for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? They had like a little opening mm -hmm. event, but it was nothing after that. It was no follow-up. But, you know, consistently, I can name at least, like, one project that was substantial for each month since we've been open. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people can't say that. So, yeah. it's we, we've been doing a lot of great work, but um, again, look what y'all have. <laughs> like, look. Yeah. Look around you. Yeah. Yeah, but I also I don't I I guess I don't get down about failures either, because mm -hmm. I look at them like lessons. So like, I think I learned more lessons about probably everything except for fatherhood in the last year. Mm -hmm. I've learned more about myself. I've learned more about the people around me, I've learned more about discipline, I've learned more about creativity. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't go shoot and go direct, but I can speak the language. I can, I can be an asset. I know how to move certain pieces. Mm -hmm. But I also look at it like, until everybody, I made promises to people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I promised Caleb he can go shoot. I'm gonna figure out how to let you, help you go shoot this. I promise Sean Craig, I'm, I'm gonna figure out how to help you do this. I promise different people that we're going to do these things. And that's not to say we're not going to do it. But because we haven't done it yet, we're re I'm not going to rest in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. But, you know, I'm a harsh critic. We all, you got to be a harsh critic where Are we come from. Are you enjoying the journey? I love it. Yeah. I Are you love enjoying it. the journey? Um, I love it now. Uh, but I'm not gonna say like it was that in the beginning. Like <laughs> I mean, I had a passion for it. But mm -hmm. when we talk about love, like you know, what I'm saying losing sleep, like losing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. It just always just focused on that. It took some time to kind of get to like an actual love for it. But right now, I do have like a lot of love and a lot of passion for it because not only is it, because before it was just like me and and, and Jarrell running around. But it's like it's like an ecosystem. It's like a family. Mm -hmm. It's like it's so many people that look up to you every single day and it's like, damn, like I wanna see what she's posting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's bigger, it's bigger now. So I, I just have that love for for that aspect of it. Like for the whatever age person to like see the work that I'm putting out and mm -hmm. being like, I wanna do that. Like mm -hmm. that's that's what keep me going. And so I, I just had that love for it in that aspect. Yeah, sure. And I think at the base model, people don't look at it the way we look at it. But art is philanthropy, right? You everything we create in our own separate self separate realms is charity to people, essentially. Mm -hmm. So because I think my underlying love is for helping people, everything we do is helping people. So that's why I live it. And And that's why you'll continually be blessed as long as you're helping people. Remember the next time I say no. <laughs> uh, it's a great episode, man. I, I really appreciate you coming out. I appreciate you know being able to do this with my boy. And let's change agents. I'm Trav. It's Caleb. I'm Tierra. Tierra. <laughs> Moray. And they can find you at um, Tierra underscore Moray. It's not Marie. It's Moray. Moray. M A R E I. Don't play with her. Please don't play. She with not her. running from Ross. All right. <laughs> Signing out. <laughs>